just have it. We now move to unfinished business number eight, that the city manager is requested to instruct the license commission and city solicitor's office to drop all charges against Upper West and its owners to reconsider Upper West's package store application and to issue a public apology to Upper West and its owners. This was pulled by Councilor Zondervan. Councilor, before you go, I'm, I'm gonna ask the solicitor to, there's some, in my conversation with the solicitor today, there's some question about what we can and cannot be discussing. Um, so I just want the solicitor to explain so we don't say something we're not allowed to. Ms. Glover. Whoops, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I wanted to bring to the council's attention that uh, any um, discussion about pending litigation cannot be held in public, must be held in executive session. I did also want to bring to the council's attention that the statements that have been made about the actions of these three city employees, Commissioner Bard, Chief Reardon, and Commissioner uh, Murati Ferrer, are unproven and are mere allegations that are in litigation pending before the Alcoholic Beverage and Control Commission of the state of Massachusetts. The those three employees through council have vigorously disputed these allegations. And uh, they are, under, they are um, on the record under oath as disputing those allegations. So because this matter is in litigation at this time and those facts are to be considered by the fact finder, which is the ABCC, in its quasi-adjudicative role as a state agency having authority over appeals of license commission decisions, I do not believe it would be appropriate at this time to discuss litigation strategy with the council because the three city employees who have been uh, sued by this business and its two principals uh, are as I said, vigorously contesting these charges. Um, so that's the first point I wanted to make. With respect to discussion of, well, also because I wanted to say that the order asks to have all charges dismissed. There are no charges that the city has brought or the license commission against these individuals or their business. These individuals have filed three appeals of decisions of the License Commission to the ABCC, and those matters are pending. Those appeals were brought by them. The city is, the, the License Commission is defending its decisions in these court proceedings. The fourth matter that the uh, individuals have brought is a superior court case that involves the same basic allegations as the three pending ABCC appeals. So with respect to the charges made relating to the litigation, I believe it would be inappropriate for the council to discuss those matters in open session and even in executive session. I question whether it would be appropriate since in this particular instance, the council is not the client to whom the legal services are being provided. The second point I wanted to bring to the council's attention is with respect to some of the allegations about whether the license commissioners, Commissioner Bard, Chief Mahoney, and Commissioner Murati Ferrer have acted fairly with respect to these individuals. Those would be personnel matters given the way these claims are characterized in this order, and I wanted to uh, remind the Council, in case you're unfamiliar with this, that under the open meeting law, if the council wished to, well, first of all, there is a question under the charter about discussion of personnel matters. It's not strictly prohibited, but certainly would have to be something entertained by the city manager. Also, if individuals with respect to their character or their actions were to be discussed by the council in executive session with the consent of the manager, uh, the employees would have to be notified in advance under the open meeting law and be permitted the opportunity to bring counsel with them 
and they also would have the right to have the session in open session if they chose to. So those are the rights of the employees with respect to claims such as this being brought against the employees. So some of the uh, proposed orders to uh, investigate the license commission's extreme abuse of discretion and power, just again to remind you that those are allegations, those are not proven facts, and uh, the, there are limitations to the role of the council or the city manager with respect to the license commission's independent quasi-adjudicatory functions under state law. So I just wanted to remind you of all of these facts, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Councilor Zonerby. I guess that's the definition of having the book thrown at you. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. So, Ms. Gloa, if we wanted to discuss these matters, would we be able to do that in executive session? The open meeting law would allow going into executive discussion to discuss um, legal strategy with respect to pending litigation. And again, I'm not sure that the council has the authority to discuss legal strategy with respect to claims that do not involve the council. It is true that sometimes in the past with respect to cases that are brought against the city and where the city manager reports to the council, particularly ones that are of high public interest, some of those uh, cases have been discussed in executive session, but with respect to uh, claims uh, such as this, it would need to be with the consent of the license commissioners and would involve uh, posting a meeting of the license commission so the three commissioners could be present in addition to the other people at the executive session. Councilor Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And without passing any judgment on the order itself, um, I do think back to the Montiero case, and I think that went horribly for a variety of reasons. And this is not that case. So there's all sorts of differences, I understand, but I feel some familiarity there. And I would welcome the idea to get a better understanding of what at least the city thinks is going on in executive session. I understand why we can't talk about it here. I understand why city staff needs to be there if we do, or at least needs to be given the option to be there um, to either present their side of things or at least to know what we're talking about. But I don't feel super comfortable that I understand it, and I'm not super comfortable that we're not going where we went with Montiero. So I would recommend that would next week work for a post-council meeting executive session or sometime in the immediate future? We would, someone would have to file a motion to call an executive session on a particular date. That can be done, I assume we can call it, someone could write that up for a late order to do it next Monday, or we can, you can file it a regular order of business and it'll be on the agenda for next Monday, as long as you file it by before Thursday deadline. I don't really like late orders, Mr. Mayor, so I, I, I so would, recommend, I would <laughs> recommend that we file it on Monday. So, we, and, and that can be filed. Um, I can Let's certainly work to put the language together to put it on the agenda um, to call an executive session for next Monday, if that's the will of the council, but we would have to vote on that at the time. Any uh, uh, just, a, just a clarifying question. Does an executive session have to be like on a Monday during a regular meeting, so we go into executive session, or can we have an executive uh, session any old time? It it does not have to be. It's just usually more convenient because everybody's here. Um, I think if we really tried to arrange all nine of us and plus all the city staff to do an executive session on another day, it would probably be a lot longer than next Monday. I know my schedule is pretty tight for the rest of this week, so I, I would yeah. say that. I, I understand that. It's just that we keep we got into trouble with a double meeting. Last Monday, that essentially was a double meeting, and this potentially could do that. So I just wanted to sort of put that out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's tricky. Yeah. 
Okay. Mr. Chair. Councilor Mellon. I just a point of order, um, something that Solicitor Glower said earlier around um, if we are going into an executive session and we are going to be discussing personnel matters where character our actions are going to be called into question, does that mean that we would have to have the commission, the license commission there, and would they have legal representation, and would it, they also be able to request, as Solicitor Glower said, that it be an open session? I just want, can you just reiterate what you said Ms. so Blower. we're all clear? Ms. Blower. Certainly through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Uh, it would be, uh, if, if you are going to discuss uh, personnel matters pertaining to employees, they do have the right to be present to hear the charges being brought against them, so to speak, and they do have the right to have their counsel with them. That would not be me because I represent all, the whole city, including um, the council and the commission in different contexts, but in that context, we wouldn't be there representing them in their individual capacity. But they certainly would have the right to bring a representative or a council, and they would also have the right to um, seek to have the hearing be held in public. So just to follow up on that, I'm a little bit nervous about scheduling this executive session for next Monday and not giving them enough time to prepare to both be there and if they need Council with them, so I'm not sure we need to be doing this this quickly. If we can be doing it for the first meeting in October, I don't know if my colleagues have comments or thoughts on that. Uh, I have Councillor Simmons, then Councillor Siddiqui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to the solicitor, when you said part of the difficulty here is the charges are not being brought against the council, it's brought against the individuals. Um, and then the second thing I thought I heard you said, and in order to do what my colleague had said, which is give them enough time to be prepared, we'd also, would we also have to have the city manager's approval? Because does, it sounded like you were saying the charter, under our charter, we're not even allowed to discuss personnel matters with personnel without the express approval of the city manager and I just they just if that's true there may be a lot of steps in this I don't know I was, as the solicitor you'd be the one that could advise us and let us know so I'm asking you Ms. Glower through you Mr. Mayor yes that is my opinion um, as, as you probably all know under the charter the council is expressly prohibited from seeking to intervene in matters of um, hiring or firing personnel, it, it's a little bit of a gray area with respect to seeking discipline and requesting the manager to discipline certain employees. One could make the argument that that's coming awfully close to the line or whatever. Um, so I'm just, that, that's something to be um, concerned about. But um, that's what, it, it's also why since the city manager is the appointing authority, I believe he would need to be um, agreeable to asking the employees and that they would need to be agreeable to that. I, I would also just say one more time that these allegations are pending before a, a governmental body and are going to be decided at some point. So um, the council could wait until those cases are resolved and take it from there. But. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the, to the um, solicitor, and thank you for reminding me. I, I have always been told that any time something was in litigation, the council was to stay out of it, uh, even when it was the council, because while it was pending litigation, you had to wait until that litigation was um, settled. So, one, we should not be involved in this because it's not our lane. Two, we didn't have to talk to the city manager to see if he would allow us to talk to the staff. Three, we'd have to ask to give the staff enough time to prepare and come with their attorney. Four, they're allowed to have this in the open. And six, there are only allegations because it's not yet been, uh, it looks like, uh, through the court of law. And so I guess my concern is um, 
I, I, I think we may be taking some extraordinary missteps in light of what we all have to do than taking on something that is not within our jurisdiction. Uh, I yield the floor. Councilor Siddiqui. I think uh, the solicitor touched on this. Is there, do we know when, is there a timeline on when these charges will be heard by the commission? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, I believe that all three cases have been heard. The party's briefs have been filed in at least two of them, and I'm pretty sure all three of them. I've been told that the ABCC usually takes about a month or so to issue its decision. And just to remind you again of the context, uh, these are decisions of the License Commission that were appealed by the petitioners. So they would, uh, we or they would have a right of appeal depending upon what the decision of the ABCC was. So there could be further layers of court proceedings after that. Councilor Siddiqui. Uh, I'm going to go to Councilor Carlone since. Just a, a quick comment. Uh, I just want an overview. I, I don't need to go into great detail with personalities. And, and my guess is that your office, or you in particular, can provide that overview, maybe with the assistance of the manager, if you both see fit. I, I personally don't need the actors in the room for me. And, and I think we're, maybe we're making this much larger than it needs to be. This is information. Some people might know much more than I do. Um, but that's my perspective. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you. I appreciate that perspective. And in the past, at times, I think I said that touched on this a little bit earlier, that where there's a topic of great interest to the council, although the council doesn't direct litigation, uh, the city manager has agreed to um, provide a, an executive session to discuss the overview of the litigation strategy. Um, so long, and in this case, I think that would be permissible so long as uh, specific um, claims about individuals were not part of the same conversation. If the claims against the individuals were something the council wanted to discuss, that's, that would trigger this other requirement to notify the people who were going to be discussed. Councilor Zonderman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, if the solicitor could clarify what exactly an executive session is because I'm confused that you indicated that the employees may request that it be an open session, so I'm, I'm just confused. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So many times if an employee's uh, performance is going to be discussed and there's some let's say, call for the person to be discharged of their duties or have their employment terminated or something, uh, particularly in a governmental environment like this, the employee may wish to have that conversation um, in the executive session, which is private and it is confidential and it is not open to the public. It is only the uh, council and the city manager and city solicitor. Um, and. Some, and often the department head or department heads in this case. But um, so it's not, it's not an open meeting. So you would go into open meeting first, like of the council, whether it's a regular meeting or some other meeting, then you would move to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing these matters confidentially. If the employee then asks to have the hearing in public, that's the employee's right. So they have that right. That doesn't mean that they do um, in many situations like this, depending upon what's being sought um, to be discussed. Uh, an employee would not wish to have it be discussed in public, So, but that's the law says it's at the employee's option. Council is on around. Okay. Um, I don't think the orders as written require that we discuss any employee's performance. 
the the order is referring to the license commission as a whole. Well, through you, Mr. Mayor, the license commission is composed of three city employees: Commissioner Bard, Chief Mahoney, and Commissioner Moretti Ferrer. So the council order says uh, requests that the manager instruct the license commission and city solicitor to drop all charges against Upper West, which there aren't any of anyway, and to issue an apology. So that necessarily involves um, at least suggestions, if not uh, claims, that the uh, license commission has acted inappropriately in some way. Um, in the next order, it says, city manager be in hereby is requested to investigate the license commission's extreme abuse of discussion and power so that clearly is a charge being brought against those three employees. So you, you can't really talk about those things about those three individual employees uh, without it involving them because it's about them and their conduct. So if I can just jump in, you know, I think that there, I think many of us, some of us may be more familiar with what happened than, than others, but I think for many of us there were, we have some questions um, about some decisions that were made. I, I think this this order is, or this policy order is, uh, unfortunately, I think it's um, written in a way that is counterproductive to what we're trying, answering those questions because it makes a lot of, un, it states a lot of accusations as fact and that's put, that has now put us in this situation of not being able to to sort of talk about things. So this this is, this maybe would have, been, would have been one of those policy orders where saying less was more. Um, but I do want to remind folks that we are scheduling, we, we are in conversation um, with the manager and the solicitor. Um, I made it clear that I, I, my intent to schedule a round table um, to, with the license commission, not to talk about any pending litigation because we can't do that, but to have a higher level conversation about who, what authority we have, what authority we don't have, how decisions are made, how is information communicated um, to the public as well as to the council. I, I have a lot of frustrations with not trying to intervene on getting the license commission to change their vote on something because I think it's pretty clear we can't do that. But I have people, you know, we all have constituents that come to us who say, well, I don't understand what happened. I don't, and not just about decisions about as sort of involved as this, but, you know, my, you know, my application was denied and I don't quite understand why that happened. And they come to us because we're their representatives. I then try to get that information from the license commission so I can inform a constituent. And it's like, as I said, it's like a black hole. I can't get any information from them. And that, I feel frustrated with that. Um, so, but that is a conversation. We are planning a roundtable in October where um, we're looking right now, to, you'll all be getting an email soon about the week of October 14th um, to see if we can do a roundtable um, to really talk about these higher level issues with the License Commission. Um, so I want folks to know that that's coming. Um, and, you know, so I, I think that this, this policy order as written you know, is not something I'm, I'm comfortable with in part because it makes a lot of accusations that I don't know whether those accusations are factual or not, but it states them as facts. So what I would, I would, we could place this on file. We could have the round table. We could go into executive session after the round table. The round table is limited to two hours, so it's not like we're gonna run into, it's not gonna be a meeting that's gonna last, you know, eight hours and then we have to do a, an executive session. It's time limited, so that might be a good a good way to manage that. The round table does not have public comment, so it's not gonna, that's not gonna extend the meeting. So I would recommend that we place this on file. Mr. Mayor. Councilor Toomey. Thank you. Um, I just would caution everybody, you know, we're, we're wading into personnel matters that is not the purview of the city council. And it clearly could be a violation of some city charter and ethics. So. I personally will, I'm going to move that this motion, this um, Council Zonabin's um, policy order uh, be uh, to voted down. So I'm going to move that uh, this be voted in the negative. Okay. So that is a motion that is in, in, in front of us. 
Uh, Councilor Zondervan? That, that's not a proper motion. On a, so you can vote to, you, you can call the question and then we can, then people can vote up or down on this, this specific policy order. Um, but again, I think um, we will be having a round table to discuss uh, the license commission and its relationship to the council and to the city manager. So Mr. Chair, point of information. Councilor Simmons. You can't listen, you're gonna to listen to me out of one of your ears? Councilor Simmons, I'm sorry. Thank you. Can um, you speak into the, I'm, I'm getting a little, too much whack, wax on my ears. Two questions, one, so Councilor Toomey has an order to but place this on file or just vote it up or down and then you, He wants to call the question. And the question is to, I've lost it. To either not support to this order, order or not support this oh, order. Oh, to support or not to support the order. So you vote yes, you support, no, you don't support, okay. Right. So that's one, another way of discharging it. All right, and then the second thing you mentioned was a round table for the license commission as it pertains to this? No. Oh, okay. So, and we are, you know, we are working very carefully to make sure that this is worded properly. We cannot, at the round table, we're not going to be able to discuss any pending cases or this won't come litigation. Up at all. So all right, as long this, as it doesn't come this up at should all. not, this specifics to this case should not come up. The larger conversation about getting clarification about um, responsibilities, um, information, uh, those kinds of issues can be discussed. So if I, I, I may, Mr. Chair, I thank you for your thoughtfulness on this. But can we do this in December and not now? I mean, I just think of the amount of time. We, we're we double, triple meeting, and you're the chair of the school committee. Um, I think it's an important discussion. I don't think it's a discussion that we have to have right away. That's I would just suggest. I think it appears like we're trying to figure out how to handle something that we may not may not at all be your intention. I just would respectfully ask that we push this further. I'm, if I were going to have a brown table, I'd rather have it on early childhood ed, quite frankly. That's coming in November. Um, but, uh, you know, that the scheduling will, will be the pleasure of the council um, as to when they want to have that. Councilor Mellon. So I have a question on Councilor Toomey's mo motion as well as the executive session. So I share your... Mr. Mayor, your concerns around the way that this has been written and the allegations in it, and I actually wrote up my own amendments where I'm, I've pressed out almost everything um, on this particular policy order because I, I have significant concerns about what, what it says. Um, but I do have questions about the incident, um, it, and I think it would be important for us to have an executive session to find out some 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 answers. So if we, if Councilor Toomey's motion is to vote on this and we all vote no, does that mean we can't still have an executive session after the round table, whenever it might be, whether it's October 14th or in December, as Councilor Simmons has suggested? I think we can schedule an executive session anytime. anyway, anytime we want on, and, and, you know, depending on the wording of the executive session about what can and cannot be discussed. But um, nothing would, whether this gets voted up or down would not prevent us from calling an executive session. Okay, I, thank you. I think, so right? I won't be supporting this particular policy order, but I will be supporting having an executive session to hear um, a little bit more from the solicitor around the case and the specifics of this particular incident that we are discussing. So I will not be supporting this particular policy order. Thank you. So according to the clerk, the question has been called. So we need to vote. I, I look in the back and it, all it is is one simple paragraph. Are we talking about something more complex than what's on page 470? Um, I think you might be looking at 2.9, we're not there yeah, yet. Yeah, we're, we're looking at 2.8, page 434 and 435. I see, thank you, sorry. Okay. So the question has been thank called, right back. roll call. So the, the motion is on the policy order and a yes vote would be to support the policy order, a no vote would be to not support the policy order. Roll call. 
on approving the policy order. Councillor Carlone. Present. Present. Vice Mayor Devereaux. No. No. Councillor Kelly. No. Councillor Mallon. No. No. Councillor Siddiqui. No. No. Councillor Simmons. No. No. Councillor Toomey. No. Councillor Zondervan. Yes. Yes, Mayor McGovern. No. No. Item fails. One in favor, eight against. And one present. Okay. So now we move to unfinished business item number nine, that the city manager being hereby is requested to obtain a legal opinion from the city solicitor regarding the license commission's authority with regard to the issuance, denial, suspension, or revocation of liquor licenses in the city of Cambridge. This was pulled by Councilor Zondra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to call the question. Any? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Mellon. I, I'm, I'm actually not certain what the question is. I'm, Any actually, I'm not certain what, what we're asking here. Can you provide, can Councilor Zondervan provide some clarity around that? Councilor Zondervan. Uh, I, I, I'll just read it to you. That the city manager be in hereby is requested to obtain a legal opinion. I'm sorry, I can read. Solicitor. I, I don't have any further explanation besides what it says in the policy order. If, if I can help, I think. Vice Mayor. I think he's just saying we should do what we did with the last one, which is either vote yes or no on this policy order. And the policy order is only this one order. There's no whereases or anything. So I'm, I, I, need to, I need a minute to read the policy order because I haven't looked at it like in the last. Okay. I would, Madam Solicitor, any any issues, comments, questions about this policy order? Through you, um, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think that if the council wishes to have a legal opinion regarding what the License Commission's authority is, uh, that, that is something that would be perfectly appropriate to ask for a legal opinion about. Um, and with regard to the second question of who has legal authority to direct ongoing litigation, we could also include that in a uh, legal opinion, but the, the answer is uh, the License Commission, so it's a pretty simple answer. Um, and in conjunction with the city solicitor who represents boards and commissions and the council and departments of the city. So either way, uh, these are appropriate questions before the body, if the body wishes to proceed. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Before I go to Councillor Simmons, I'm, I think I interrupted you, Councillor Mallon. I apologize. Did you have anything further? Uh, I just, again, would like some clarity around where this is coming from and what we're trying to seek to, to have happen with this particular policy order, and I don't think that I have that clarity. So if somebody would like to further explain it, that would be wonderful. If not, Councilor Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So on the face of it, if this is it, I would have to vote no for two reasons. One, because I don't thoroughly understand where it's coming from. And then the second part is you, if you're going to have a, what's it called, a round, a round table to talk about the parameters, jurisdiction of the License Commission, that should answer any question that would be brought up here. And then thirdly, the city solicitor said no, and did I say no? It's, it's, they, they have full authority, and the authority comes from, I think it's Mass General Laws. I can't um, cite book and chapter. I don't know if this is a fruitful use of the solicitor's time, um, but if we're going to have a round table, then I think this makes this order moot. I yield the floor. Mr. Mayor? Um, before I go back to you, Councillor uh, Vice Mayor, I'm going to go to Kelly, Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this would be a much easier order to understand if it were fleshed out with some sort of something that said this is why we want this sort of thing. So as it is, it's just, I think, way too broad to generate anything useful in response. Vice Mayor? Um, well, it is it is broad, but I, I 
Yeah, and I, I, I don't, can't read Counselor Zonderman's man, but I think I know what he's getting at. I was going to suggest that maybe this should be referred to the future roundtable, and then at the roundtable when we're discussing the license commission and, how, and ways, you know, whatever we just did in the last order, this could be part of it so that we know these legal questions regarding the authority. This came up This came up four years ago at the beginning of my first term. We went round and round about the License Commission and who has the authority and um, the Articles of 1930, and I can remember <laughs> our former city clerk. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we, it's probably worth talking about again and, and having a better understanding of, of, of this. So that could be part of the roundtable, but that would probably mean that the roundtable would have to be uh, not in October, unless this decision were easy to produce. Okay. So, Councilor Zondervan, um, you called the question to vote on this. There's been a suggestion that we refer this to the roundtable. I would look to you to, would you, do you want, still want to call the question and vote this up or down, or do you want to move to refer this to the round table. Um, yeah, I, I would just call the question. Call the question. We'll call. <laughs> On approving the policy order, a yes vote will uh, will issue this policy where a no vote will mm. vote it down. Councillor Carlone. Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Devereaux. Yes. Yes. Councillor Kelly. No. Councillor Mallon. No. No. Councillor Siddiqui. Yes. Yes. Councillor Simmons. No. No. Councillor Toomey. No. Councillor Zondervan. Yes. Yes. Mayor McGovern. Yes. The order passes five to four. <laughs> 